What if I told you the decisions that you make today will impact your family for generations? What I'm talking about today is the great American caste system. When you think of a caste system, you think of India or you know, Vietnam or some other place like that where people are born into a certain caste and regardless of what they can do, they will be treated and they will live and act accordingly to that caste. I'm here to tell you this has been going on for Amer in America for generations and in this video I'm going to explain to you how it works and more importantly how to escape it. If this is your first time here what I want you to do is download 30 days to 2500. This will help you start a side business to get some more money in your life and also do the Hustler's Mindset Pimping Your Mind for Success audiobook course so you can develop a strong mindset. What I want you guys to do is, and this is here on YouTube, I want you to check out this documentary, The Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. The Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. This is an example of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video. The um, Great American Caste System. Now, you're thinking this is home of the free, land of the brave, we could do all of that stuff, but for generations, after generation, after generation, after generation, we've had people be born in a caste system that is very hard to escape. Now, with the Great American Reset, of the, re the, great, the reset of the Great American Dream, what's gonna happen is many people who were formerly upwardly mobile are going to move into the caste system. And this is gonna set the die for many future generations to come. This is how it works. What happens when you become poor? You live in a state of scarcity. And when you live in a state of scarcity, your whole living existence becomes about survival. Everything you do is becomes about survival. Everything you do is predicated on money. Do we have money to eat out? Do we have money to pay the rent? Everything is survival mode. And there are studies that is done when a human being is put under this type of stress and pressure that it rewires the brain. This is just how bad this is because <clears throat> essentially, since you're in the state of lack, you're in the scarcity mindset, it rewires your brain to create more of the same drama. So what happens is instead of you elevating, and since you're in this survival mode and you're trying to always make it, your body and your brain are in a fight or flight situation all the time. It's on it's the, 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 the switch is flipped on. Now, this is not the environment for creating wealth or upward mobility. This is a very bad dynamic. It's a bad, a bad environment. And you will have many people who will be situated in this environment where their whole total existence becomes about survival. And then this is why alcoholism is very prevalent among the lower classes. This is why drug use is very prevalent among the lower classes. This is why crime is higher in poor neighborhoods because people are just trying to survive. And this becomes a lifestyle. You hear what I'm saying, America? It becomes a lifestyle. So this becomes the totality of your existence. And you get to a point where every day you're trying to survive, every day you go to work, every week you get your check, you pay your bills, and it puts you in a mental position where you can't look up. You're always looking down. You're always looking for the next disaster or the next crisis. And you program yourself to operate in that environment. This is why the classes typically don't miss, mix because if you're an upwardly mobile person, you're gonna have a different rewiring of your brain. You're gonna have different perspectives and you're not gonna be able to understand or relate to someone who's living in this environment of lack. It's here on YouTube, it's on, I forget, there was this rich guy in California who allowed these two homeless people to move into his multi-million dollar home. And they had the strangest, this, you know, it's a really, cause Google it, um, rich guy lets two homeless people move into his home. 
and the they they both had challenges because this guy was upwardly mobile he owned the company he was like this is what you do to make money and these two homeless people they were formatted for the streets when they first moved into his house they slept on the floor because they were not used to sleeping in beds let me say that again they slept on the floor because they were unaccustomed to sleeping in beds this is one of the things that happens to people in the lower caste system they become indoctrinated and systemized to dysfunction and even when they're removed from that environment and put in a better environment they can't cope because they were geared for the other environment and they had it said it took them a few months to be start to start sleeping in the bed such a simple thing but it's deep it's deep y'all it is so deep because this is what happens and this is where the indoctrination happens and this is where you have generation after generation after generation of poverty because they've been indoctrinated in the scarcity lack mindset I mean like I'll talk about my family history my mother who actually came from a upper middle class family she well you know long story short my grandfather committed suicide uh, the way that I read it because you know very few people want to even tell me that and I had one aunt who sat me down and she told me everything and from what I can gather in my knowledge he was depressed and back then you know you didn't go see a doctor when you got depressed you went to church and you prayed and he took his own life and this negatively impacted my mother who became I guess she was just so heartbroken that her father killed himself that she just lost her mind and she became a single mother and had three kids by three dudes out of wedlock and essentially this is one of the things with the caste system because my background you know due to my grandmother because I, I will tell you how it went down my grandmother was my mother and my mother was kind of like my father and my grandmother because I never went to daycare my grandmother taught me to read taught me my ABCs and stuff before I went to school so I never actually got behind so in some ways I got a middle-class upbringing even though I was the product of a single mother and that factor made a huge difference in my life because of that exposure to that middle class upbringing middle class values middle class lifestyle middle class tutorial middle class training middle class education is one of the reasons that I did not fall into the pit of the programming that my mother had set into motion because of the cast because essentially I'm not supposed to be where I'm at I'm not supposed to be the dude that I am I'm not supposed to have transcended my upbringing and I'm going to talk about that a little later so stay tuned but essentially the caste system due to behaviors due to attitudes due to mindsets it becomes hard to escape because you are programmed and groomed for your caste let me say it again you are programmed and groomed for your caste this is why it is not uncommon for a single mother to have a daughter who becomes a single mother whose then daughter becomes a single mother because it's part of the programming this is why when you see people like W. George Bush, I mentioned him before. Even though he was a C student, he had the programming and he had the rich folks cast. Cause see that there's, you know, education is only a really small part of wealth. I know that some people would disagree with me, but really it is. It's about behavior, it's about network, and it's about access. And George W. Bush was the son of a multimillionaire. So he had all that came with it, and this is how this C student rose to become the president of the United States. Donald Trump's another one. I don't really know what his educational record was, but 
when your your cast is that of wealth so many things are possible but when your cast is that of the poor cast like i said the wonderful whites of west virginia check it out it's about like an hour and 30 minutes and you will see because this is why i say the things i say that poor white people and poor black people have similar pathologies and it's a similar cast and frequently when you get outside the city, they get along very well together because they're the same people. They're the same people. And th this is why you, you're starting to see this epidemic of young white girls with little black mixed babies because they fellowship, they hang out together, they understand each other because they're in the same cast. Once you're in this cast, it is incredibly hard to get out of. And that's why it's a cast. And this has been around for since, this has been around for decades. It has been around for decades. I would say the greatest period in America was from the 1900s to about 1970, because you were able to get out of your cast to some degree if you had exceptional or external circumstances focused. Like, I'm gonna tell you what happened to me and how I escaped my program cast because I should be probably 300 pounds. I should be living in Alabama. I should be running for Jesus on Sunday. And I, I, I should, uh, I, I should be making 15, 20 bucks an hour. That was my programming. How did I escape that? I had an existential crisis because the military put me in middle class and that was one escape. And I came out the military because I didn't want to make the military a career. I, I didn't see myself staying 20 years. And I fell out of my caste system and fell out. I was middle class and you know, and once you, you fall out of your caste, you lose friends, you lose prestige, your network collapse. And this has happened to me. So I was outside of my caste system for about three years and I suffered financially, I suffered some health consequences, and it was really, really bad. Now, what got me out of it? Self-education, self-auditing, because I became 100% really clear of who I was and where I was. I had a situation where I could have became a criminal, and I rebuked that because that wasn't my character. Even though I was poor, even though I was hungry, I rebuked that and I didn't become a criminal. So, and this is where those middle class values that my grandmother instilled into me came and saved the day. Cause I didn't do it, but I figured out another way. Once again, my grandmother, she taught me how to read. Reading, books, exposure. So I started to immerse myself in reading. I started to gain new knowledge because I had this existential, this existential crisis that reprogrammed me and I programmed myself out of my caste system. I want you to, you know, I want you to understand how hard that is to do because the first thing is I realize, and you know, like I get a lot of y'all who are pushing back on me like, well, it's the, you know, this happened today when I'm doing this video. I don't know when I'm gonna drop this video, but this happened today. Someone challenged me and it was like, this is the greatest economy in the world. We're gonna have a V-shaped recovery. And then I hit him. I was like, okay, player, if you believe that, let's put some money on it. I got $5,000 for you. Let's put it on the bet because I think you're wrong. I have enough faith and integrity to put $5,000 on my words. Put up or shut up. He deleted the comment and ran away. He deleted the comment and ran away. Cause see, he, let me go ahead and just go off this little track right here. I own a business. I know what happens to a business when the money stops. This is why, you know, because people are like, well, these businesses, you know, if they didn't have enough money to stay in business for two months, they were going to go out of business anyway. That would be incorrect. 40 something to 43% of businesses are going out of business because we had an, ex an, an unusual, unprecedented event. They weren't going to go out of business anytime soon. Eventually, five, six, seven years, eight years from now, maybe, possibly. But 
this event because of money velocity. The money stopped. This is the worst thing in the world. Because when I was in business and eBay held our cash and stopped our sales, the money stopped. And because of my training, I knew that this was like a really bad situation. It was a really, really bad situation. So I got busy and I started to create money momentum again. So when y'all come at me and you're like, I was a former, why aren't you in business now, bruh? Yeah, I'm talking to you because you come up here because I'm telling you all of the money, Warren Buffett, Stanley Druckenmiller, Ray Dahlia, all of the billionaires and the folks with billions of dollars of cash are with me and they think the same thing. You want to know why? Because they old and experienced. They've seen shit like this before. They know the playbook It's like, oh, this ain't going to be quick. This is going to go on for years. And most of you are saying it because you're in your feelings because you're too much of a coward to face the reality of what's about to happen. So bury your face in the sand and, you know, let chaos and calamity claim you because you're going to be the first ones to go because y'all are in a state of denial. So going back to how I got out of it, I reprogrammed myself and I understood now self auditing. And many people don't want to self audit. Many people do not want to be hundred percent honest with themselves. I knew where I was and as much as I wanted to blame my ex wife, there was more to the circumstances. Essentially put, I did not prepare for the crisis. I did not save money. And once I begin to take ownership, which is not part of my cast, because people in my cast, well, you know, them rich folks, them folks, the white folks, you know, they ain't gonna let you ain't gonna let you rise. They ain't go. I, I started to defy my programming. And once I took 100% ownership, it's like the reason that I am here is because I made mistakes. I did not do, I did not make the right decisions. This is why I'm here because I made some mistakes. And I took that ownership. I took off the victimhood cape and I started to stand up and I started to make better decisions. And I started to be 100% accountable to myself. And that's where it changed. That's what it's going to take for you to escape your caste system. If you want to reposition yourself in the social economic stratus, status strata, you got to take 100% responsibility. You got to make better decisions. You're going to have to do things totally differently. And then I, you know, I cheated a little bit to get into another caste system to get a job where I, my network got better. Everything you do in this world, it will be around, through, and because of people. And once I, I begin to understand how the system worked, I moved up again. And then I moved up again. And then I got into a caste system where I was hanging out with millionaires. It's a totally different groove. It's a totally different mindset. It's a totally different way of living. I was dating this chick and she didn't understand why I had two cars and why my car insurance was so expensive. And I was like, well, my car insurance is expensive because my cars are expensive. And also I have some other policies. I have enhanced policies because uh, I have insurance for everything up in this crib because I have probably seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 worth of equipment and computers and stuff and all that's insured. And she didn't understand that to pay a little bit per month was serious prevention in case something really, you know, essentially if my house caught on fire and everything got burned up, I would be able to replace everything just like that. But this is a lesson that I learned from my higher cash system. Once you elevate cash, your beliefs, change. Let me say that again. Each cast has a certain set of beliefs and behaviors and many people will live and die in the same cast that they're born into, which is why my situation is peculiar and atypical. I'm not supposed to be here based upon the way that I came into the world and the programming that my mother tried to induce to me that I vigorously rejected, even as a child, I was just like, that don't make no sense. 
I'm not going to do it. And I didn't. But many people don't have that fight back. They just submit to their parents' indoctrination. And next thing you know, they're 75 years old and they become their parents and they're like, what happened? This is the great American caste system. And what's going to happen during this global reset is more people are going to enter that lower income caste. And that's where they're going to be. That's where their children are going to be. That's where their grandkids are going to be. And that's where their great grandkids are going to be. And we're seeing this because, you know, all you folks are like, well, you know, we're going to bounce right back. Let, let's let's talk about this V-shaped recovery. V-shaped. Boom. We hit the bottom. We bounce back up. There ain't no time. Be patient. I'm like, what do you mean be patient? Just because you're seeing these folks who are getting these stimulus checks and on unemployment are driving around a little more and shopping at Ross, that does not mean that we're recovering. People are tired of sitting in their house. They're getting out and they're doing, you know, if they were lined up at the Mercedes Benz dealership or they were lined up at the Bentley dealership, I was like, you might have a point. Shopping at a low discount store is not a sign of a recovery. It ain't. They're not at Macy's. They're at Target, as some of my friends call Target. At Ross, these are low income discount havens. Yeah, that's where they're going to shop because that's the only kind of money they have. They don't have any real money. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, you know, traffic's increased a little bit because people got stir crazy. People got restless. They're out and about. They're doing stuff. They're packing the parks. But to you folks, if we're going to have this V-shaped recovery and the state's going to open up, why did Georgia, why did 230,000 Georgians get laid off this month and counting? See, when y'all come at me, y'all come at me with your feelings. I come at you with facts and numbers and statistics because I read. My grandma taught me how to read. I read a lot. I read every day, about three hours every day. I read, I study. I know what's going on. And also, I'm going to say something at the, at the cost of being elitist and I don't really give a damn. I've had businesses. I have run businesses. I've had staff. You have not. You talking out your ass with your assumptions. I am talking from experience of knowing what happens to a business once the money stops. That is one of the worst things to happen to a business. And I will say that many businesses don't run their books correctly, don't have their checking accounts set up correctly, don't even have their corporate structure set up correctly. But that's not the reason they're going out of business. They're going out of business because money velocity stopped. If you got cash flow, a consistent cash flow, this gives you the ability to weave and bob and weather a lot of stones. But when your cash flow stops, and it don't stop for a week, it stops for months, this sets the cast for you to go out of business. And this is why when eBay did to, uh, what we did to us what we did, I immediately, that day, I start figuring out ways to keep the money going. We had literally a three to four day interruption in cash flow. Maybe not even that long, because I know the importance of cash flow. And I'm speaking as a business owner. I'm speaking as someone whose name was on paychecks. That is one of the worst things to possibly happen to any business let alone a small mom and pop business with no good reserves that's been living on credit and credit extensions. But back to this cast talk, how do you escape the cast? First thing is you got to know where you are and you got to be hundred. You got to be 100% honest with yourself. You got to be a hundred percent honest and you got to get rid of the victimhood and the blaming and start shouldering responsibility because this is the only way you're going to move up. Otherwise, you are doomed to remain in the cast that you were born in. I want you to think about this. In America, we celebrate this guy who was born poor and becomes a millionaire. That story is, happens over and over again. Or does it? How many people never made millionaire status? When you start to look at all the folks who remain in their cast, these stories become even more powerful because they're so rare.
there's only like 25 million millionaires in the world out of a population base of 7.6 billion. There's only 2,600 billionaires out of the same population base. So having that level of wealth is not normal. It's very atypical. It's not the norm. What's normal is for you to be making $33,000 a year, living in a piece of crap trailer or house or an apartment and driving a car that's literally killing your financial future. That's normal. That's the norm. That's what people are doing. That's where people are. But the great American caste system is dangerous because if you want to move out of it, you're going to have to really understand where you are and understand the people in your caste. And you're going to have to change your behavior because it all boils down to behavior, boils down to behavior. And a lot of people don't understand how dangerous a certain behavior is because it's normal and everybody in the cast is doing the same thing. I'm just normal. I'm one of the people. I'm a member of the herd. Bah, bah. I'm just a sheep. Bah, bah. I'm just a sheep. I'm doing the sheep thing. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Feels kind of good. I kind of like it. Understand each cast has a certain set of behaviors and habits and attitudes and mental perspectives. The perspective of a child who is born and raised by a stockbroker who teaches their children early about the stock market is going to be 100% different than a child who's born in the ghetto and his mother teaches him how to get some food stamps. Well, this is what you do to get those food stamps. You go down to the office, you tell them your name, you don't, you know, you, you, you lower your income. Totally different worlds, totally different worlds. And if you want to get out of this world and move into this world, you're going to have to adapt the habits, the behaviors and the perspectives of people in this cast. You're going to have to let all of this stuff that you were doing that you enjoy so much, you have to let it go. So to help you with that, get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success, get 30 days to 2,500 and begin to push on yourself and begin to grow as a person. Because I'm here to tell you, if you don't, your great, 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 great grandbabies are doomed. They're doomed. That's right. Baby Jody, baby Babu, they doomed. If you don't make these decisions today, like right now, make these decisions, start changing your life.